In this video, we are going to add some logic to our platforms to determine if they're the starting or the start, stopping, the goal platform. Determine if you win by successfully landing inside the platform for the goal. And then trying to put some form of damage, velocity type, infliction, pain on the player if they happen to be going too fast and hitting the platform. So let's get started. We're going to jump into this in Unreal Engine first. Now I'm going to tell you when I was first doing this, I did get lost a lot because this involves math to determine if you're on the platform properly and velocities. So I may get lost again. So just fair warning, math is far from my strong suit. But boom, that, boom, boom, we're done. Let's get right in. Let's find our platform. Uh, we have a platform somewhere, right? Nope. Let's close that. Let's close that. Let's close that. Uh, blueprints. Platform. So our platform consists of this. Uh, it's a little tall for me right now. I'm going to go with 0.25 to give us a little thinner platform. I think that'll look better. And it involves an item that you can land on uh, because it has a collision volume on it somewhere in here. Where is it at? Right here. Collision, generate overlap events. It's a block, so it's got a collider around it. We actually want another collider so we can tell if the player's on it because we're going to want them to land on top of it and be inside of it. And then we're going to want to check and see if they're inside of it. Um, then we're going to be able to also determine if it's a starting and ending and do some other stuff. So first things first, let's add a new collider. So let's find a box collision. It's in here somewhere. Did I really pass it? Yep, box collision, of course. We'll call this one collider because it's going to be our collider. And we're going to put it a little bit above and it's going to encompass the size of our box. So, whoops, did not mean to do that. Collider, scroll back up. Uh, I believe our box is 100 by 100, so 50 by 50 by 50 should work perfectly. Yep, it does. We've got it a little bit above. That's kind of like what we want, so that way the actual collider can be um, on top. I don't know, I'm thinking maybe set it on top exactly. So what's that going to be, our Z? So what do we want for our extent? Maybe 25? Something like that? Does that look good? That looks good. Let's move it a little bit down. And now it should be... It, it's close enough. The player should land on it. It should be good. And it should always be the size of the platform itself. So if we were to scale the platform, let's say, like to this, you'll notice it's going to fit. So if we want bigger or longer platforms, it's going to fit appropriately. So that's what we wanted. There we go. So we're good there. We want it where when the player collides with the collider, well, technically doesn't collide, where the player overlaps with the collider. So it's a trigger in Unity. Something happens. So we're going to find on component, begin overlap, and we're going to add an event for it. And this is when they begin their overlap. We're going to clean out this stuff. We don't need it. And what are we going to do? So we want to see if the player overlaps. And then if the player overlaps, we're going to... Um, determine if they're actually inside of it. Unfortunately, if we go back here to the collider and we look at the events, we have uh, sleep, wake, end, begin. There's no actual inside of event. You have to person, you have to check for yourself if they're actually inside the collider or not. So we're going to use a timer to do that. Unity nicely has an event called stay that allows to determine if something's still in there and it checks it every frame. So let's see. So do, do, do we are going to do, do overlapped actor. We kind of have a small problem. We don't actually know if it's a player that's overlapping us. How do we determine if it's a player? We can use an interface or we can use tags. Um, I prefer interfaces, so I'm going to make an interface because it's just a lot easier for me. So let's find blueprints and blueprint interface. Blueprint interface player. And this is just basically a way of... Um, it's an interface. It's a way of saying, hey, this is this, or this implements this. So you can easily have something do something generically. In the use case here, if we assign our player this interface, we can check and see if it has this interface. And if it does, well, we know it's the player. So I'm not going to actually have anything inside of it. But if we go to our player, blueprints, player, Go to the defaults, oh, no, nope. settings, interfaces, add, player, and we're done. Now, this object can be identified as a player by going to what collided with us, implements interface, 
player. And now anything that hits us, that overlaps with us, if it implements the player interface, we are going to want to work with. So there we go. So now I know if, like, for example, we have enemies or rocks or anything else that touches this collider, we only care about the player itself. Now, in order to actually check, we're going to do some math. And I've already got the math pre-done, so hopefully we don't screw up too much. But we need to actually see if the player is inside of our collision box. In order to do that, we're going to use a timer. And this one should be pretty simple. So we're going to set timer by function name. And then we're going to promote this to a variable. And this is our collision check timer. That way we can get rid of it later if we want. And we're going to fire this off. We're going to, Every tenth of a second, we're going to check to see if the player is successfully in our box. And then what do we want to call this? Um, is player in collider check? Because... I can't think of a better name. Okay, cop please copy. Thank you. To make sure we don't misspell it. Custom event, paste. There we go. So there's our custom event. So anytime something begins to overlap, so the first time the player hits it, we're going to start this timer. We're going to continually call this timer every 0.1 seconds, and then we're going to check and see if our player is actually inside of there. Now we should probably, let's move this here for now. Should probably be smart, and unfortunately, this is stuff we have to do because we don't have the stay event. We're creating it. We should probably stop it once they actually leave. So we only actually want to do this when they're in it. Once they end it, then we're going to go ahead and stop our timer. So when they're here, we're going to steal this code from here. We only care if the player has left us. If the player has left us, we're going to go ahead and grab this collision timer. And we're going to clear and invalidate. So that means we are no longer checking for our player because they have left our overlap. Okay, simple as that. We're not doing anything yet, but we actually have our framework in place to do something. Okay, so what is the next thing we want to do? We are going to check and see if the player is in our collider. Now I have some math. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cheat. And I'm going to actually grab, let's see, I have some code right here. I'm going to grab this code right here. Oh, let me grab the if statement also. And I'm going to paste it in here. I This took me a little while to do. Again, I am not a math person. I can explain it, but I'll be damned if I can tell you how I figured out in the first place. But basically, we're checking to see if the character's bounds or the size of the character on their y-axis, so the left and right axis, is within the bounds of the collider that we have in here. Now you notice an issue, we don't have the actual actor overlapping. We get that here, but we don't actually save it. So we're gonna wanna do that. So we're gonna want to grab the other actor, promote it to a variable, and, and thank you, and overlap, overlapped actor. And this is basically going to see which actor is overlapping us. And then there we go. This will tell me true or false, is this player overlapping inside of our bounds completely? So as long as our bounds are bigger than our player and our player is completely inside of our bounds, we're going to get a true message. And we can easily check that by doing uh, print string. And we're going to go, it is in bounds like that so will this work we don't know we have a couple small problems and we're going to run into those when we work on this here's our first one we're in the bounds let's actually go out of the bounds and you'll notice it stops and then when i come back in it should start up again when we go out it should stop and we come in so we're good problem is this is our starting platform we don't want this to trigger on the starting platform answer really simple is starting platform. We'll set this as a boolean and we'll make it instance editable and expose on spawn just because I like doing that one. But instance editable basically gives us a little eyeball. And if we are inside of our editor and we click on a platform, you're going to find is starting platform. And this will allow us to edit that platform for that instance on if it's a start or the stop. And that'll allow us to check hey, it's our starting platform, let's not actually fire off this code and do anything. So we'll go back into here. 
Now we only care about that on the overlap, right? Overlap? End overlap? Now we should probably do it on both beginning and end overlap to be safe. And we're going to do it here. So is starting platform. And we're going to do an and. And uh, we'll move this one down to here. We'll move this to here. We'll move this over to here like that. And we'll just move these over a little bit more room like that. There we go. So now we're going to check, is it the player and is it the starting platform? We're going to go and do this. But of course, that's not what we want. We want to know if it's not the starting platform. So we just go not. This is one situation where common logic does tend to take a little bit longer in Unreal Engine compared to Unity because I have to actually add a new node and put them in line rather than just doing the exclamation point, which is a not operator. So that is something to keep in mind. You have you know, easy and not easy in both of them. But we'll just copy and paste like this. Put it over here like this. And there we go. The only time we So the only time we care about something entering and leaving is if it's a player and if it's not the starting platform. Other than that, we're not going to trigger our code. So now let's try this again. And there we go. We never start the timer because we are not the starting platform. Now, in theory, if I did this right, we would go over here and we'll land and we'll try to not to crash and the code should, there we go, is in bounds. And there's our code. So there's our code for our starting and stopping platforms to determine if we have successfully landed correctly. We're not crashing because I haven't put that code in yet, but that's, that's our basics. Uh, we probably want to put some code in for crashing. Um, crashing is going to be handled a little bit differently, but that should be really simple. This code is all handled by overlaps. So you have your triggers in Unity or your overlaps in Unreal Engine, and that's allowing things to basically pass through a boundary. What we actually care about is if using physics, something actually hits. So we'll go to our platform this time, and we're going to see if our platform gets hit. So on component hit, platform, like this. So if something hits our platform, um, we probably care. Again, is it our player? So is it the player that's going to hit us? And we care, We don't care about which platform it is. They can crash into their starting platform all they want. And if it is, we are going to go ahead and destroy the actor. And I'm going to go and do this just so we can test it. And we don't want to destroy the platform. We want to destroy whoever hit us. So let's see what happens. It should, should work. Obviously, it doesn't work, but it should work. So we need to determine why it doesn't work. So we have our collision checks. Those are kind of, um, uh, collision checks. First of all, let's debug this. Let's make sure I'm not jumping ahead of myself. Yeah, it's not triggering. So we need to determine why it's not triggering. So we need to figure out on our platform, what is it colliding with? It's blocking all dynamic. Okay, our player's dynamic. That shouldn't be an issue. Eh, well, it's not. The problem is, if we look on here, we're not generating hit events. We're not actually simulating anything that hits. So that's kind of a small problem. Well, let's try this again. And there we go. By default, we generate overlap events, not hit events, which is funny because that's technically the opposite of Unity, where Unity generates hit events by default, and you have to click trigger for overlap events. And the nice thing is you can see they can both be active. So there we go. So now whenever a player lands on the platform, they get destroyed. Uh, small problem. We really probably don't want to have that happen just like when they start. So a couple things. We'll move our player down a little bit like this. So that way they don't fall very much. Second of all, we want to do it based on velocity. So if it is our player, and we're going to get the velocity of the player. So we're going to get the velocity. So tell us how fast they're tru cruising along. We're going to go ahead and get the vector length of this so we'll just type in length and this will tell us basically how fast they were going in a direction and we're going to compare that to a float so if you're greater than a certain number then we're going to go ahead and destroy you so we'll do another if here we could probably have done an and yeah you know why don't we do an and so we'll drag this stuff back here there we go we'll do another and because we're no point in doing two bulls in a row well 
So for the sake of argument here, technically by doing two branches, we are eliminating one branch because we're only going to check if it's a player. But I don't think computationally wise, this is really much of an issue, but that is something to keep in mind. Technically, we're going to check both of these. Um, I don't believe blueprints have early out like in C sharp, where if we'll go from left to right, it'll check and see if any of them fails. It won't actually check the rest of them. I don't believe blueprints has that. So that is something to keep in mind if you're used to that in C sharp. Um, there we go. Okay, so let's try this. There we go. Now our player doesn't die anymore. Um, we're not really exploding, so um, we need to figure out why. So to, to, we get the velocity, we get the vector length, so let's go ahead and... Oh, ha! someone probably forgot to hook that back up. And we should die. That's what I thought, because we have nothing. So now we just play with it. What's a number? Nope. Nope. Let's see, what's a good number? Probably lesser. Okay, so I'm pretty sure 100 might not be a good number. So let's try 10. Okay, let's try 1. We know 0 killed us. Okay, apparently my velocity is... Why is my velocity not going good? Okay, so 0 0.1. I don't know. I think somebody broke something here. Well, okay. Now, now this thing's just driving me crazy. Okay, so yeah, for debugging, print string. This is just like a debug log. We'll go ahead and print our vector length right to our screen and in theory we should have okay in theory we should have this working but obviously we don't why don't we have this working it is an interface uh oh because it's not going to trigger an and because this velocity is not greater so yeah unhook this we're going to hook this straight into our print string that's one thing i like about blueprints is you have the ability just to screw around stuff like this okay so our velocity is oh what are we checking our velocity on that would probably be something smart to check. What is this? Um, whoops. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I wonder if we're not checking velocity on the right thing. Doo -doo -doo. So debug. Let's see. What are what are we hitting? The player. Okay. So why does the player not have velocity? Huh. Okay, well, the player should have a velocity. Well, okay, let's check. Let's print out. Um, so we know that one works. Look at this giant mess. Yeah, there's no velocity on the player itself. Okay, so let's find our player object and figure out why we don't have... Embedding, it's because we have... Oh, man. I wonder if that's what it is. I wonder if I did one of those funny screw-ups again yeah that would be why okay so that makes complete sense on why it's not working the um root object right here is not uh physics enabled therefore it's not gonna have any velocity we'd have to actually grab the player from that is what we'd have to do uh, so we can do this and get rid of our root and that will probably fix it there we go now you notice we actually have a velocity so rigid body kicked me in the butt again we had to do remember how we had to do the same thing with unity where we had a base game object and the rig physics wasn't on the root well it just bit me in the butt so nice thing is debugging we'll get rid of everything like that slap this over to here uh, i'm gonna go with 40 and see what happens Uh, 20? Oh, did I... F I... <sighs> Man, why did no one tell me I forgot to hook up Destroy Actor again? That's twice that bit me in the butt. Okay. So, 20. Probably not a good thing. You'll also notice we have some errors. And this is what I was hoping to run into. 
in the middle of this. Okay, 40. Was that a good... What do you think? Was that a good... Good amount? I'm thinking more, maybe. Let's go for 70? Okay. No, maybe 100 was right. Maybe I had it 100 and it was right. Okay. Oh, man. That's... Ew. 150? 100 is pretty harsh there because it's like you barely make a mistake. There we go. Okay. So we'll, we'll go for 125. We can tweak it later. But I'm going to go ahead and play. I'm going to kill myself, and then I'm going to actually do something, and we'll know some errors we have to fix. And um, it's kind of unique to this one and not unique to... Uh, well, actually, we'll run into the issue when we run into Unity. I'll push some buttons. I'll hit Escape. We'll run into an error. You'll notice we've run into a crap ton of errors. The nice thing is, like the console, it tells us what's wrong. So Activate Thrust is trying to find a... Pending kill, pending kill, pending kill. We killed our player, but apparently some of the stuff we have is still trying to talk to the player. So we have a small issue. So we'll pull this up and we'll look. Well, yeah, we kill our player ship, but anytime we push the buttons, it's trying to talk to the player ship and it's trying to do something. We need to either kill the input or check to actually see if we have a valid thing to talk to. And that's the smarter thing you should always do. And the nice thing is we have some nodes for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do is valid. And that would be the wrong is valid. So we're going to try this again. Is valid. And oh my god, there's too many. Okay, seriously? It's that one, right? Nope, that one is. Okay. Let's try this again. We're going to drag it over here and do is valid. And that's the one. Nope, still not the right one. Third time's a try. That's the one I want. It's a nice executable one. So what this is going to do is it's going to check and see, is the ship valid? If the ship is valid, then we're going to go ahead and execute the code after that. So we'll duplicate it right here. And we'll do this. And we'll go ahead and it should be fine now. Now if we were to hit the bottom thruster after it died. So I'll go ahead and go up. I'll go up and kill myself. And now if I push up, no errors. But if I put right... I'm going to get errors. And if we look on here, we're going to find errors in here. And that's going to be on our other thrusters and our input access. So anywhere you access our player, we need to make sure it is valid. And this is generally good programming practices in the first place. We should have done this when we were designing this. Generally, um, when you're doing regular code, C++, for example, C++, well, C++ too. But C sharp inside of um, Unity, you'd kind of do this in the first place if you're doing proper programming. You're going to make sure anything you try to access is valid or not null before you access it. So this is the way of doing that. So anytime we talk to the ship, we do it there, we do it there. Here's our left thruster. And we'll just go ahead and slap the stuff in here. And this is all, this is all standard common programming stuff. This is just how it's done inside of Unreal Engine. If you were careful, I mean, you wouldn't have to um, do this. But if you've ever had a game crash and with a null error, this would be why. You, something went wrong somewhere. The game tried to access something that no longer existed. And there was no safety check in place for it. And that's not really something you want to do. There we go. So those should be all there. Those should be all there. Add force, add force. Uh, our player itself only accesses things it has access to, so that's not an issue. So this came about because of the fact that our um, player controller is separate than our player, which is not the case in Unity, which is why we don't have to do this in Unity. So if we finish this up, our player moves around, our player does what he wants, he crashes. I've definitely got to adjust that, but I'm not really worried about it. And when he dies, arrow keys, no more arrows. So now we have the ability to start, fly somewhere, land, and successfully do something. We have no fanfare yet. That's what we're going to work on in the next video when we work on the interface. But we can actually do stuff now. So let's go ahead and we're going to go into Unity and we're going to quickly duplicate this, which is nice. So here's the code in Unity. And let's find Unity itself. Here's Unity. And let's duplicate what we did. We have platforms. Let's find our platforms inside of our prefabs right here and right here. 
and we need to adjust our platform to have another collider. So add box collider. Boop. Now we have two box colliders. This one we actually want in a different place. So we're going to change its center up. So that's Y, right? Yep, like that. Um, let's see. This one we didn't need that big, right? Maybe 0.5? Yeah, we'll go with 0.5. We'll set this 0.75 up. That sounds right. There we go. So now we have a collider on the top. We're going to turn this one into a trigger because we only want to trigger off of it. And then we're going to give a reference to this to our player player platform. Oh, we have no we have no code on the platform. That's our problem. We have to put a script in here. So let's do a new script called platform. That might be a little bit helpful if we actually could do something. So let's open up our platform script. And can we open up our platform? Really? Visual Studio? I asked you to nicely open up my platform script. Thank you. There's my platform script. We'll fix up the coding here. I'm going to go ahead and do, 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 find that. There we go. And we have our platform. And we are going to add some script. So we're going to need access to our platform. So that's probably the first thing we want to do. We have Unreal Engine. Let's jump back here and we're going to show you how nice this is. Here's the platform for Unreal Engine. We know that we're going to need, um, well, we don't need this because we have uh, code. We have the stay event. So we're not going to need to duplicate that code, the um, timer code right here. We are going to need to duplicate this, our math function. We're going to need to know if it's a starting platform. And we're going to need to have access to the actual collision to check for collision because we have two different ones. We have the box collision and then we have our, you know, overlap collider. So we're going to need a public bool is starting platform. And we'll set that to false by default. And then a public collider called collider because it might not. And that should be it, I think. Yeah. Doesn't like that name. No, because it's... So this was... Remember I mentioned... I did mention in one video that at some point on Unity went through and changed some of the convenience things before they had rigid body as a convenience helper and then they removed it. Now you have to get it yourself. Technically Collider, as you can see, is there already, but we want a specific Collider because I have two different ones on side this platform. So I want to get a specific Collider, which is why I'm making a public variable. Let's nuke these because extra cruft we don't need. And we are going to make some code. Uh, let's assign the collider before I forget because you hopefully noticed I was going to. And let's find our start platform. We should have some code and we should have a collider. Uh, this one, uh, by default, we're not going to have that. So we need box collider here. Apply. Now our default one will have its proper box collider. And then we're going to set this one as our starting platform and our goal as, there we go, no starting platform. So we're good there. Go back into our code. And we need to use the events. We have a collision event and a trigger event. We're going to use the trigger event for the collider that we see at the top. And then we're going to use the collision event for the smashing into it. Uh, void on trigger stay. And I mentioned Unreal, we had to create this. In Unity, it will check items that are inside of the trigger volume, and this will run every time there's something inside of there. So is this a starting platform? If it is, we don't want to do anything. So we'll just return. That makes it nice and easy. Then we need math. I'm going to copy my math again. So we're going to... Uh, I'm going to try to copy my math. Oh, darn it. Hold on. So here's the other platform from my other code. So let me grab this quickly. And we're going to grab this. No, I don't need that. Here we go. Math absolute. So we're going to grab this. We'll close this down because we don't need that anymore. We'll pop it into here. And we'll do this. We're going to get rid of this because we don't need this yet. And this right here, the math absolute... Collider bound center X, get component the collider, the bound center, blah, blah, blah. And we continue on. This checks the collider 
onside our platform with the collider that the player's ship has and determines if it's inside it or not. So this is the same math we did on Real Engine, just one really long string because it's C sharp. If they're in here, same things as before. We're going to, well, which one's this one? This one's win, so I guess we'll just do debug log. We don't have any way of knowing if they won or not because you know, landed. There we go. So it should debug any time they land on the platform. I guess we can check. Uh, you'll, you like I mentioned, and hopefully you noticed, that went a lot quicker doing it in Unity because we already did all the hard work inside of Unreal Engine. And we just simply ported our code over. So let's see what happens. I know it's tiny on the screen, but all we care about is the debug and see if that worked. Okay. Am I in? There we go. You have landed. Now you notice it is repeating at the bottom here because on trigger stay is triggering. We probably need to fix that. That is kind of one difference. With Unreal Engine, you'll notice that we basically, when we were done, well, actually we didn't. Did we? Uh-oh. Okay, so let's jump back to Unreal Engine and let's fix that small issue. Oh, I wonder if anyone noticed it. So right here, this is our timer that fires off. Right here. It's going to check and see if someone's in here and then it prints out in bounds. We actually want to stop that. There we go. That way it only fires off once. The first time they actually land, we are done. We no longer want them to check every half second because we're going to trigger our, you know, you win script. And I mentioned that because we need to do the same thing inside of here. So we'll make a new variable called public bool uh, should check. Oh my gosh. Actually, it doesn't need to be public. This one's private bool should check for collision because we don't want anyone to mess with that. And actually, true. So we'll set that to default by true. Should check for collision equals false. And then we go over here and we go and should check for collision. There we go. So now our event should only fire off the first time. Once you land, uh, this event fires off, and then we're going to go ahead and never check again. So in theory, we can test this because we only want to fire off, you know, our event once. Let's see. Go in here. Eee. Oh, 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 wait, way too fast. Oh, my gosh. And it should fire off. Yep, there we go. You've landed, and you'll notice it's not counting up anymore. And technically, if we were to fly away and come back, it'll never trigger again because we've disabled it. But we're going to, you know, not really an issue. But that's it. Uh, if you notice that went a hell of a lot faster because we know what we're doing. We also have, you know, this is one nice part when you're doing math and sanity checks and um, logic, logic checks. C sharp definitely is quicker than dragging out a lot of notes. So we are good there. Let's kill our player now. So we'll do void on trigger. No, not on trigger. On uh, collision. Enter. So this was going to fire anytime we collide. Since one of ours is a trigger and one of ours is a collision object, the platform itself, this is going to trigger when we collide. So we already did math before. So we need to figure out. Let's see if collision. Where's, give me my small collision, please. Collision dot relative velocity. So this is our velocity like in the other one. And magnitude gives us our length. And if it's greater than, we'll go with 3.0. And should check for collision because um, once we've landed, we don't want it to like explode for some reason. Uh, destroy. Uh, oh, no, collision. I keep doing that. Collision dot game object. Um, let's see what happens. I'm going to hit play. And we'll land. And for a floss. Now I don't, I, I should probably check and see if it's working. Okay, there we go. It was enough. I don't know if it's got enough speed. Let's find out. I think, you know, we, we should, I should definitely mess with some of our settings at some point. But let's see. Uh... I'm thinking that's not enough speed. Let's go with two and save. Let it recompile. There we go. There we go. So we're going to go with two. We're going to make sure it doesn't crash. That is one advantage. Scripts are kind of hot reloadable inside of Unity. 
if you edit them and you can edit their values while it's playing so it's kind of nice to be able to do stuff like that okay but that should be it there is literally everything we took i don't even remember how long that was let's see we're at 35 minutes so 25 minutes or so in unreal engine we figured out the math we did all of our stuff we hooked up we figured out what we wanted to do recreated it in half the time in unity because we knew what we wanted to do already so in case you haven't figured it out it's less about the engine and how long it takes to do in the engine and more just experimentation and tweaking and actually figuring out what you want to do in the first place than it actually is to implement it inside your engine of choice